All right, here we are at SENS4 conference in Cambridge, and I'm with Aubrey de Grey today, and I just want to find out a little information about how the conference is going and perhaps what is the most important thing that has come out so far out of SENS4. Well, in terms of the actual presentations, I can't answer your question for two reasons. <laughs> the first reason is I haven't seen very much of them because I've been running around like a headless chicken. Sure. And the second reason is, of course, I invited them all, so I love them all, and I have no, I have no favorites. How have things changed? This is SENS4, obviously, and it was back in 2000, 2000. 2000 when you formulated um, the SENS strategy mm -hmm. around the turn of the century. That's right. Uh, and how have things changed from conference to conference, what you have seen, uh, not only um, at the conference here as it, uh, as it is presented, but also as far as the science uh, behind there's the been, SENS strategy? There's been a lot of progress. Um, first of all, in terms of the actual um, education, if you like, the process of getting scientists to be more optimistic and more confident about where this is all going. Essentially, the difficulty that I've always I've had throughout, but especially early on, was that I've essentially been creating a whole new field out of parts of other fields. The whole field of what we might call biomedical gerontology, the application of regenerative medicine to the problem of aging, is something that nobody really worked on, and nobody really thinks they work on it now. Three quarters at least of the speakers at this meeting are people who would not call themselves gerontologists. Right. But they're here because they're interested in each other's work. And so it seems to be a natural um, um, uh, constellation of topics to bring together. Uh, but when I started out, um, the whole idea was so radical, so novel, that I couldn't possibly have done a conference like this. So the first uh, few events that I did were just invitation-only workshops with sure. like eight or ten people in them, and that led to some of the important papers, in a sense. The first big conference I did here was in 2003, and even then it was very, very difficult to... Um, to make a good case for it. So really that was a bit of a compromise conference. It was half of the speakers were the sort of people I wanted along, and the other half were really mainstream gerontologists working on stuff that I don't think is going to have actually very much relevance to doing anything about aging. So by, the, by the time of the second conference in 2005, we well, were getting enough traction that I was able more or less to invite who I wanted. And now, certainly, it's, I mean, I don't need to worry about... About, the, about filling what, slots. Well, yeah, that's right. And also, I don't need to worry about the names of people. You know, I sure. don't need to make sure that people have, like, name recognition in the field or anything like that. So I have a lot of people here that nobody's ever heard of, but they sure as hell heard of them now. <laughs> uh, one thing that I noticed uh, being at conferences uh, like uh, Sense4 here or the Understanding Aging Conference is that there are a lot of... Um, there's a lot of research going on that seems to have a lot of promise, mm -hmm. but it, it seems to be uh, a rather difficult to get that into clinical trials. What is the main uh, stumbling block as far as implementing many of the strategies? Well, of course, that, th there's different answers to that question for different um, topics, for different fields, different speakers, but I'd say, I think for the most part it's simply because they're relatively early stage. And I mean, that's of course what I focus, tend to focus on. I tend to focus on, one, on helping to promote things that have not got far enough along yet for all that many people to be interested in or even aware of them. Um, some things, of course, are moving to clinical trials already, but mostly what I'm trying to do is just hasten, the, you know, bring the time to clinical trials down from whatever, you know, 10 years down ten, to five years. Five years, okay, yeah. yeah. And it seems to be, uh, though we are seeing some progress, it seems rather incremental. But uh, from my view, vantage point, it does seem we are getting more clinical trials on like novel drug therapies or novel, novel stem cell treatments. That, 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 that is true. And even at the earlier stage stuff, which have not got that far, there's still very good progress. Of course, the more you know about the biology, the more you can appreciate how much progress is going on. If, if, if for, for the non-specialist, sometimes it looks like, you know, nothing could be still an infinitely long yeah, road ahead. Yes, exactly. um, but it's, yes, I'm certainly very encouraged. All right. Well, thank you very much, Aubrey, thank you. for joining us today.